Good morning, Pilgrim friends and family. This is my last of uh, four books for the Black History Month that I would like to share, some of my new people that I've been exposed to recently. I'm happy to be sharing the biography of Philip Freelon, who was responsible for the beautiful Black History Museum in Washington, D.C. The book is called Dream Builder, the story of architect Philip Freelon, published by Lee and Low Books, Inc., written by Kelly Starlings Lyons and illustrated by Laura Freeman. And it was published in 2020. So it's our new book. Vision. In Phil Freelon's word, art breathes dreams to life. Everywhere he looks around his Philadelphia home, paintings and drawings greet him from the walls. Phil listens to his parents discuss artists at the dinner table. He watches his big sister splatter canvases with creativity. He plays basketball with his buddies and carries a sketchbook around his neighbourhood. Buildings, roses, people passing on the street. Phil sees them all and draws clear and strong. But at school, what Phil sees is out of focus. Letters on a page don't spring to life as words. His mum, a teacher, tries her best to help him. Mm, m, a, m, a, n. What does it say, she asks. Phil lowers his head and his heart sinks. His big brother and sister are great students. His dad is a successful businessman. Why can't he see how to read? Someone in his family shows him a strength he holds inside. His pop-pop, Alan Randall Freelon, is an educator and Harlem Renaissance painter. In his studio, Phil sees pastel homes by harbours fishermen, harbours fishermen, still wet canvases and palettes with oily colours, dare him to touch. One day, the two of them walk through the woods. Phil darts this way and that until Pop-Pop tells him to sit by his side on a log. Close your eyes and listen, Pop-Pop says. Phil hears birds crooning and squirrels scampering across crunchy leaves. He smells the fragrance of earth. He feels the breeze dance across his honey skin. Phil is seeing the world with an artist's inner eye. foundation. As Phil grows older, his special sight deepens. His thoughts have colour, shape and form. Math and science fill him up like art. Phil can see strings of numbers and formulas in his mind. Reading takes longer to master. His mum and sister recite Shakespeare for fun, but Phil freezes when called to read aloud in class. He struggles to find joy in books until he realises that words can create images too. In time, those story portraits show him new worlds, just like art. Phil explores different media. He doesn't just draw. He writes essays and poems. He can see the shape of a car inside a block of balsa wood. He builds using his senses to create. When his father gifts him models after business trips, Phil spreads pieces of battleships, cars and planes out like a puzzle. He doesn't need directions to know where each piece should go. Soon his paintings, sculptures and models begin to reflect the times. He carves African masks from bars of ivory soap. Black is beautiful. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. They're not just mottos, they're beliefs that live in him. His father's stories are part of him too. Stories of having to sleep in a different southern hotel than his white colleagues. Stories of being the only black man in airports except for the porters. Stories of being mistaken for an athlete instead of a businessman. 
In his proud black neighbourhood, Phil sees people who never make the news. His neighbours are doctors, suit and tie wearing detectives, teachers, friends learning to play concert piano. Phil hears a chorus around the nation shouting for justice and equality. When his father is at the March on Washington, Phil watches on TV and feels like he's there with his dad, soaking in Dr. King's dream. Frame. At Central High School, Phil signs up for a drafting class. When the teacher asks the students to look at the front of the machine and draw the other three sides, Phil gazes deep inside and can see what's out of view. He becomes the top student in his art and drafting classes. He wins industrial design competitions. An idea emerges until it becomes clear as a snapshot. Phil wants to be an architect, someone who designs buildings, a perfect blend of his strengths in art, math and science. At Hampton University, a historically black college, Phil aces every architecture lesson, tutoring classmates who need help. Later, when he attends North Carolina State's University School of Architecture, he soars too. But he wonders why they never study anything created by people who look like him. On his own, he discovers black architects who design celebrity homes and a university chapel. He reads about African and Islamic builders whose class is left out. He thinks about artists like his Pop Pop, whose work made unsung people and places seen. One summer, while Phil's still a student, he takes the lead in designing a solar greenhouse in Virginia. As the structure grows and glistens, a dream begins to take shape. Phil wants to make the world better through what he creates. Form. As an architect, Phil turns wishes into buildings with doors and windows, plumbing and lights. By the time he founds his own firm in North Carolina, his mission is clear. He will not design prisons or casinos. Phil creates schools, libraries, bus stations, museums, places that help people, that show everyday beauty, that celebrate heritage and fill hearts with joy. Some of the things on the page um, that he's designed are the Tenley Friendship Neighborhood Library in Washington, D.C., the Durham Station Transportation Center in Durham, North Carolina, the National Center for Civil and Human Rights in Atlanta, Georgia, and the Reginald F. Lewis Museum of Maryland, African American History and Culture in Baltimore, Maryland. Then one day Phil hears about a dream imagined decades before he was born. In 1915, 50 years after the end of the Civil War, people dreamed of a national memorial to honor black soldiers and sailors. That dream grew until they could see a museum that would rise like a phoenix on the Washington Mall. A museum to honor black achievement, a museum to show black resilience, strength and pride. For decades that dream was deferred, but in 2003 a national commission makes it come true. A museum will be created that documents black history, life and culture. Phil and architects around the world want to design it. Dream. Years later, the commission chooses Phil and architect Max Bond to create the preliminary master plan. For months, they work together, making a guide to future spaces and exhibits. In 2008, an international competition is announced. The winning team will get to design and build the museum. For this project, Phil and Max need a dream team. They want to include someone whose world work is known beyond the United States. Phil and Max meet with David Ajaye, an acclaimed British Ghanaian architect. As the men talk, they, can, they watch one another's body language. Can they unite? The team clicks. Phil will be lead architect, coordinating all aspects of the complex project. 
David will be lead designer, coming up with ideas in collaboration with the team. They have just 60 days to plan a dream passed down for generations. They huddle around tables, talk on phones for hours, send countless emails and dig deep. They look. They see a structure shaped like a crown worn by African kings. They see ironwork patterns forged by black artisans. They see a porch of welcome and they listen. They hear the ocean rocking ships of stolen people. They hear footsteps marching for freedom and justice. They hear voices of unsung heroes waiting for their day. In front of the judges for the competition, Phil tells the story of the dream they want to build. He feels Pop Pop, his father and mother, his family with him. His models stand proudly, his word pictures light up the room. Soon Phil hears the word that makes his heart sing. Yes. Their next mission is to get the museum open before Barack Obama, the first black president, leaves office. In 2016, a century after the dream was born, they deliver. In the contemplative court, Phil reads Dr. King's words. Until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. He closes his eyes and smells the moisture of the falling water, listens to the peaceful sound. The museum rises near where his father once stood as Dr. King shared his dream. Phil thinks of Pop Pop, who taught him to see like an artist, his parents who encouraged him to create and imagine. He thinks of how every experience led him to this moment. Phil Freeland, the kid artist from Philly, has become a builder of dreams. And there's a quote on the other side. We are determined to work and fight until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., 1955. There's an afterword by the, uh, the architect, so I'm going to read that. Growing up, I didn't know any architects. I was drawn to the arts and the talent that I displayed as a child was encouraged and nurtured by my family. When I discovered architecture in high school, I realized that art and creativity could be used to create buildings. Over time, I learned about the achievements of African-American architects, including Junian Abel and Paul Revere Williams. I was inspired. Coming of age during the height of the civil rights movement, I felt compelled to contribute in some way to the struggle for social justice. As my career as an architect evolved, I continually saw opportunities to bring my design skills into alignment with my desire to make positive contributions to my community and beyond. With many developmental steps along the way, these parallel aspirations ultimately led to my role as architect of record for the National Museum of African American History and Culture. My involvement with this amazing project was an honor and a privilege and the pinnacle of my career. The decades-long journey leading up to the museum's opening included significant contributions from countless individuals and organizations. While the architects portrayed in Dream Builder represent the leadership of the design team, it was Lonnie Bunch, the museum's founding director and now the secretary of the Smithsonian Institution, who was the driving force behind the realization of this new national landmark. A special thanks goes out to Kelly Starling Lyons, who conceived of the idea for Dream Builder and wrote the story, and to Laura Freeman for her lovely illustrations. I also want to thank my wife, Nienna Freelon, for her love and support over the years. And that was statement was written by Philip G. Freelon, May 31st, 2019. So there's a picture of the, him standing outside the beautiful museum. Him as a younger man and him with his family. I was fortunate to see the outside of the beautiful, beautiful structure. 
uh, when I was in DC a few years ago, but I wasn't able to get a ticket because it had just opened and there was um, a backlog of people wanting to get in. Next time I visit DC, I do hope to be able to go inside that beautiful structure and enjoy all the wonderful exhibits inside. I hope you've learned, enjoyed learning a little bit more about Philip Freelon, who was one of the driving forces in the architectural team behind the Black History Museum in Washington, DC. Thank you.